you would just be making decisions based on you know what rumor, you think <laughs> rumor and speculation exactly yeah. so I think I need to uh, it's a question really to the panelists in terms of what are some of their strategies for understanding that customer more That's and if they are looking at things like business analytics, business analytics to understand their customers. That's a good question, uh, gentlemen. answer the question. Um, I, I, for a while I thought it was going to be a statement <laughs> because I would just say true, very true, uh, in terms of what you say. So all the banks uh, have their, 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 their systems, their, their, their logistics, set up in a way to see how much they can gain in terms of information on the customers and more importantly profitability of all the segments. So it's hard to add to what you say except to say that that is a must that where efficiency one things we didn't talk about significantly we were on the revenue side but in a, a low interest rate low growth environment that we're in now efficiency looms very very large in this of things. And that is why we have to have this understand our segments and our channels and match them in such a way that they make sense. We, we have to know more about where we make our money and where we do especially where there are options when we talk about social media and, and things that are, have a, something called free, F-R-E-E, -E, that we have to compete with in certain aspects of, of the business. So Simon, all I can say to you is true, very true. Well, and and I think you just touched on the, the next generation, millennials or the M generation uh, as they come. The expectations of our clients as they come up the stream. Uh, whether they do things differently or expect things differently is, is a real challenge. Philip, you were going to respond, I think, to Rather than being overtakers of all, and I'm going back generations of banking, I mean, it ties in with what Simon is saying as well. Most of us will do various degrees of data analytics to tie that into the needs analysis of the individual customers so we can be proactive in reaching out to them as opposed to them necessarily coming to us and asking us. So as that develops, we should get better and there should be a, a closer match with regards to the respective customers' needs 
and meeting their expectations. So once again, time, yes, but just to what degree and how far and how quickly are we getting there? And the refinement of those internal algorithms that we can actually develop. Excellent. Things have you've been quoted more than a few times already. How do you feel about that, gentlemen? That I, would, uh, I would agree with that. Uh, uh, obviously, it's a subject that you could always do more. Um, and uh, we've been trying to go uh, much more on the offensive. Uh, we started a bank. Week, uh, we have done uh, public seminars. Uh, we've been doing a lot with the SME sector, uh, particularly. But I would agree. I mean, I think um, the perception is still there that.
because uh, sometimes we may not have the total solution, but there is a solution to be had, and uh, it's just a matter of, of, of them having the knowledge of how to go about it. So uh, I, I would agree with this. Something that we were working on. Well, it, it, you know, to disagree with it. Um, I think we need much more dialogue with the regulators and with our publics. Um, we've been spending, trying to spend some time on what we call thought leadership. And, and thinking about economic environment and other stuff like how it impacts on the customer. But maybe we should be talking bread and butter issues to, to them. This is what it means to them. This is what we're doing. This is where we're going. This is what this transaction really means. This is why these costs apply. This is why we have to approach SME um, in a certain way, uh, small to medium enterprises. So, Joan, I take the point that in terms of how we plan to interface with the public, and then we have to be, you know, we tend to keep these thought leadership sessions with the business community as against maybe the consumer community more directly. And I think that bit of insight is, is very valuable in terms of how we should engage because I think all the banks have their, their programs to engage, but are we engaging with the right segments at the right time with the right subject matter? is a point that is raised, and I, I think the same point holds good for the relationship between the banks and the regulators, and I think most banks have uh, appointed officers who deal with the regulators and the frequency, but I don't think we could always not or there's a case for over-communication. I think we need to do much more of that on those two stakeholder um, groups. Well, do we th what, what is the communication that is necessary to that market space, whether it's to the business, small, medium, or to the consumer individual, uh, what is the message that is lacking or insufficient uh, at this point? I mean, if it's, if my opinion is if, if you expect people to love you, forget about it. Uh, but if they respect and trust you, which I think was your original point, the bank's real, real call is to be respected and facilitating dreams comes out of the trust and respect rather than, than a, an emotional con connection. Is that the communication? What, what is it that we need to focus on here in order to make them... Uh, Joan, 
Una, uh, you know, just how, the, how, how would you say that uh, it should be a, about the education, about the, the financial services and the financial products available uh, with each bank? Uh, and it can be through the bankers' associations. They can take a lead and by going to the, uh, through the media, sometime formally by giving advertisements on a regular basis, sometime through our own uh, interviews internal communication mm -hmm. that these are the facilities the uh, people should expect from the banks and then there is a system uh, ombudsman is there that uh, to give the feedback central bank is there uh, but since the deputy governor is here, I would make a suggestion. I have not seen regular meetings between the banks and the regulators. Uh, I would suggest that to reduce this gap of communication, what is the public uh, perception and what is the uh, people's, uh, I would say, requirements with the field that have not been met out by the banks and where the banks should have a proactive approach uh, and which, which are the ways they should come out so that the people get convinced that yes, the banks uh, are seriously, uh, they want business and uh, uh, we as a customer are welcome to the banks. So these all these communication can be directly with the uh, chief executives of the banks through a regular meeting. Let me say that can be quarterly. Quarterly, we, we are only eight banks here. So quarterly, the regulators and the banks can meet and then a agenda can be drawn that this is the feedback we are getting, how you will address this problem. So I feel that uh, each one of us will be in a position to not only address the particular and specific problem, but also tell that why uh, this thing could not be done. Maybe that sometime people approach for that particular type of loan and they get the reply that we don't consider it. And they have the perception that otherwise banking banks are telling that we are having surplus funds and when we approach 